Good morning or good evening or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Talent Finders would like to welcome the phenomenally talented fine artist, celebrity photographer, Timothy White. So welcome, Timothy. Thank you. Hi. So, Timothy, congratulations on all your achievements. Can you share with us how your journey into uh, fine art celebrity photography started? I don't know. I mean, I was a little kid and was really interested in snapshots and history. The family snapshots kind of meant a lot to me. And I don't know, it somehow became of interest to me visually. And I was always looking for some sort of alternative career. I wasn't um, I wasn't going to be a lawyer or a doctor and I didn't have a family business to go into. And so I don't know, photography sort of worked for me. Um and it was all sort of sex, drugs, and rock and roll, too. At the time I was growing up, I was looking for something a little bit different. So I started, I picked up a camera. I got interested in, in fine art. I ended up going to the Rhode Island School of Design, which was a, an art school in Providence, Rhode Island, and studied photography. Um, but when I got out, you know, I did, they didn't really prepare you how to make a career. They just sort of, you know, we studied art, basically. It was, yeah. a, great, it was a great environment for me. It was really yeah. great to be around. Um all these different disciplines and, and different types of, of um, artists to, to interact with. So I got out and I, you know, started taking pictures in New York and it was rock and roll bands. It was the, like, my interest was music. And so yes. that started to happen and it grew. And, um, you know, I found that, that there's something in my ability and my personality, my ability to connect with people and to make them feel comfortable and to make them um, somehow um, react to me and not the camera. Yes. Um, and that became um, my stock and trade. It became an important part of how I took pictures. Yes. Um, and it was definitely about people. It just made sense for me. And then one yes. thing led to another. I started doing music. And then one thing led to another to Hollywood. I found out I was really kind of good at it and good at the interaction with people and be able to not be intimidated by it, but instead to sort of control it and to get what I wanted. Amazing. So you are one of the greatest eyes on the planet. Your culture defining portraiture visually demonstrates the carefully crafted public persona of your uh, superstar subjects. So can you share with us more about your process when working on each individual project and what goes into the preparation of your photography? I tend to not prepare a lot. Um, I, I'm very reactive. I like to be reactive. I, I yeah. trust spontaneity i trust my ability to um to react to a situation rather than be too proactive so you know i'm i'm prepared i've got good people around me um i i know what i'm doing but i don't really want to preconceive too much because it yeah. could get it could get thwarted by something if you're counting on a summer day you know it might rain so, so yeah. you have to kind of be prepared for anything and be adaptable, I suppose, as well. Yes. You never yeah. know how, what mood people are going to be in. You never know a situation. You may walk into a situation, if it's a location or anything that inspires you. It could be the clothes or something. And so it changes. And so if I, I don't plan too much, I kind of react. Yes. So the style of your photography is very niche um, and highly skilled and specialized. So can you share with us more about this medium and what led you to focus on celebrities and famous faces? And who was the first celebrity you ever shot? <laughs> um, I think the first person, well, I don't know. Be, again, I started shooting music and I don't know, but my, my closest and good friend, uh, Julian Lennon, was a very early subject for me. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think. I, mean, I actually, I think I shot Paul McCartney before him. I just started connecting with different people on different levels and, and got opportunities, got some some photographic opportunities, whether it be from a magazine or, or some publicity shoot or something. And because I was shooting music, the direction was into entertainment, which sort of celebrity. But there was a shift at one point for me where it went from just music to Hollywood as well. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. So I want to obviously talk about your talent as a fine art photographer. And you obviously mentioned from an early age that you were interested, um, you know, in photography itself. So do you believe that you had an innate natural talent? Or was this something you specialized in to master this very niche and skilled space? No, I sort of learned as I went. Um, I was never really a technical person. Photography, cameras, 
all of it, the dark room, none of it like really, you know, I knew a lot of people, who, my, a lot of my peers who were like really focused on it. And it was all about that. It yes. wasn't about that for me. It was somehow about some sort of experiential interaction with people. And so although I'm highly technical, although I understand the medium, although I've practiced the medium extensively my whole life, it's not, it, that, that's not what drives me. What drives yes. me is uh, interaction um, with with people. Absolutely. So what would you say some of the biggest lessons have been in your career? So you've maybe had multiple, but what would you say stands out for you the most in terms of, you know, the, the biggest lesson you learned throughout your career? Yeah, I mean, I think I kind of mentioned it a minute ago. I think I think trusting myself, um, walking into a situation, I can be with someone who is such a um, uh, an inspiration, someone who is so important in the world, whether it be a president, whether it be a huge rock and roll star, one of the biggest actors in the world. And it could be intimidating to some. Yes. Um, and it's not that it's intimidating to me. I, I still may have um, some butterflies. I still may feel that I'm um, I'm a little bit anxious about making sure that we connect and, and, and I get what I really want from it. But mm trusting in myself and and walking in the situations and being able to react to what's before me yes. and certainly the personality that's before me and being able to connect with with almost everyone has created um a, a huge archive of um of great experiences that are collected in the moments that i capture amazing so having worked in the world of celebrity and famous faces and high profile people in a very highly competitive um, business. Can you share with us more about how you broke into the space and how you were able to sustain such a long career? And what would you say differentiates you from others in this space? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not, I'm not competitive. I don't look at it that way. I remember yeah. early on in my career, so many of us, my peers in New York City at the time who are sort of working for the, the right magazines, Rolling Stone and Vanity Fair and having the right advertising clients and, we each had the best of a handful of agents in New York City. And so we all were after the same thing. And people would say to me, oh, did you see so-and-so's pictures in the magazine? I'm like, nah, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't look <laughs> at it. I, I just, I kept blinders on, you know, I, yeah. I, do, I do things my own way. The profession of photography and, and the, what other people are doing isn't what interests me. What interests yes. me and what I believe in is, is myself. And that's how it, how it grew and how it, it moved forward. Um, I think if I, if I really was too aware of what everybody else was doing, it just make me neurotic and, um, yeah. and do that. So, and I don't know what distinguishes me is me. We're all individuals, you know, yeah. we all could have the same clients doing the same work, but we all bring to it ourselves. Um, and we bring to it something different. So, so what have been some of your biggest career highlights? And again, you probably had multiple, but what really stands out for you in terms of highlights within your career? Well, you know, what I tend to do on my photo shoots is um, is not do what someone else wants or follow an art direction or a style that, that somebody wants. What I do is I create experiences for me that yes. interest me. And I somehow bring my talent into that experience, that situation. And within that situation that makes me comfortable, even though there's a challenge to it, allows me to create something fresh and new each time out. That's amazing. So your work has graced, obviously, Hollywood movie posters, high-end publications, as you mentioned, albums, and so much more. So what was it like for you when you saw your first work and does it still 40 years give you the same feeling as the first time you saw, you know, whether it was on a billboard or on a, on a Hollywood yeah. poster, does it give you the same feeling yeah, it as does. when you first started your career? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's all ego, it, it's ego, but I guess to some degree, but it's also just, and, and being relevant or being a participant in, in pop culture, you know, that yes. that's a big part of it. Yes. But I can't deny, you know, driving down Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles and there's a billboard of an <laughs> album cover you did, a billboard of a movie, movie poster you did or that kind of thing. And and I guess there is, even though I don't 
I, I'm going to contradict myself here, <laughs> even though I don't feel really co competitive at all with my peers or anything like that. There's still a like, yeah, I did that one. You know, that's a good one. Yes. <laughs> um, and also, you know, the way the way it comes off that, again, because I go in not really knowing what I'm going after or what I'm going to get when it comes out and it's good. It's like, yes, that was really that, that's amazing. I'm really proud of that. Yeah, no, that's amazing. So having worked with some of the biggest names and faces in the industry obviously comes with, uh, you know, various big egos or big personalities. So how do you manage this process while still meeting the demands of not only the client, but also the demands that you place on yourself to reach the desired outcome? Again, I'm not intimidated by my ability to interact with anybody. In fact, yeah. we're all just beings. We're all the same. We all live our same lives. No matter yeah. what your career, no matter what your looks, no matter what your your status, um, and I kind of try and treat people all the same. That's so important. Just keep yeah. being just uh, human. I think, <laughs> I think it is, and I think I, I my father kind of gave me some of that. You know that that you treat the the janitor the, the same as the board president. You know, it's everybody's yeah. the same. So Absolutely. I go into it with that. You know, I think that's a part of it. I think again, I have this way of cutting through any kind of insecurity or fear or intimidation of the process because the yeah. camera can be intimidating. So I think I have a way of cutting through that, distracting people, getting them to focus on me and our conversation um, rather than the process and of what we're doing, which is capturing their image. Um, you know, the capturing of an image is not truthful in, in it's an illusion that I yes. create in my process and part of that process is my way of certainly it's technical um it's lighting et cetera et cetera make a pair of whatever the the choice of of frame that you choose but it's more than that and that is my ability to um to get them to be distracted and to to not focus on what we're doing but instead focus on our conversation and and what we're experiencing together yeah, absolutely. So even having worked for over 40 years in this incredibly creative business, you did mention you don't really necessarily always get nervous, but are there certain scenarios, should I say, or situations where you still get partially nervous or, like you mentioned, butterflies? There's some of that because it, it, there's people who you really respect or or they have such power you know to walk into the white house and photograph a president is it's like you know it's yes. like okay, it's like this guy doesn't have a lot of time for this so i gotta make this <laughs> true but yeah. um no it's not but i guess because you've also been doing it for so long so i guess maybe it's just like it's not as big a deal in terms of nerves maybe um I, I mean, I don't say, assume, but <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't say it, it's nerves. I think it's, um, you know, it's a challenge to do something new and different that pleases everybody, the subject, the client, yourself, um, and to come away with something that, you know, achieve that goal. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, it's like an adrenaline thing. And, yes. and once the adrenaline kicks in, you know, I'm on, I'm in a zone and, and it's yeah. about, it's about everything that I see is is within a frame and that frame needs organization uh, or or composition um and all of those elements of technical connecting with the subject and and composing that that frame um is an adrenaline rush that i get caught up in and once i start i'm not even conscious of who i'm with or what we're doing it's about making it work in that yes frame. yeah absolutely so you've worked on so many incredible projects and amazing famous faces. Is there one particular project that you worked on that really stands out and that was memorable and meaningful for you? There's many. I, again, I try to make my photo shoots are never boring. It's never just yes. someone standing there. It, it's it's not about that. It, it's it's taking control of it and making it what I want it to be. And I don't know what I want it to be until yeah. I get <laughs> and try and, and try and live this experience, which is my life. And I'm trying to bring them into that experience. And out of that joining of, of effort in that experience comes magic. And so, you know. Uh, yeah, no, for sure. So who were some of the biggest influences 
was there anyone who was a big inspiration to you within your career? Um, I mean, I, I'm I'm inspired by, you know, photography is about light. And so I'm inspired yes. by light. I'm inspired by paintings of certainly classical paintings where, and where, you know, someone really had the opportunity to, to study light and to put on the canvas what that light represented and how can I create that light or use that that light in my own work. I think um, fashion photographers, contemporary fashion photographers inspire me probably more than, than uh, people who do what I do, more than portrait photographers per se. Yeah. Um, there's something in there, in the composition and the style that is just more relevant sometimes irreverent um whatever that that uh, you know i'll take elements from things like that and get inspiration from things like that you know to, to back up a second it, there's there's so many experiences we were talking about each each shoot is such an experience that i can't really it's like my children and i can't really talk about yeah one the other, <laughs> you can't but pick your favorite <laughs> but but there have been major moments you know based on the way i approach things that that really stand out i mean i do a five-day motorcycle trip with Brad Pitt and we photographed all the time. I've flown airplanes and helicopters with Harrison Ford all over the world. You know, some of those experiences were super special beyond the the, the photographs that came from it. So yes. those, those stand out as personal experiences, you know, even even more so than the images, although what came out of those were, were really special images. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it sounds I'm amazing. I'm a lucky man. So your fine art photography is not just about shooting subjects, which you've obviously mentioned, and faces, but it is also about storytelling, which is what you are known for. Why is this so significant to you? We all have our own story, right? And yes, again, absolutely. If I can tie this together, but my thought process is that the only way I can take pictures or enjoy what I do or what has become my modus operandi is... Yeah to live my own experiences and bring my subjects into that. And yes. Um, so like Brad Pitt motorcycles, you know, I'm into motorcycles. He was into motorcycles. We planned the trip. I made a photo thing out of it. I had my assistants follow in a, in a vehicle and a stylist with clothes. And we made a photo session out of something that we enjoyed that was personal. So I yeah. try and do that on some level with everything that I do. Um, if I've got a subject and I'm walking uh, I've got them for an hour and they're supposed to meet at a studio. I might do something in the studio and then say, you know what, let's go down on the street and do something. And I'll just, something personal will I'll gravitate to like yes. this great graffiti, some great dirt, you know, the dirty <laughs> wall, a step, um, a car, something that interests me that I'll put my subject into. And it becomes a prop. It becomes a landscape. It becomes the, the pieces of the composition that I make. And so in that way, you know, it's my own personal thing that I'm bringing to it. Yeah, well, that's also where the magic happens, I suppose, as well for you. Yeah, you know, it is. I can't do it any other way, you know. No. <laughs> someone told absolutely. me to do it, I'd, be, I'd still make it my own in some way. Yes, absolutely. So that leads me to the final question. What are the three key pieces of advice you would give to those looking to pursue a similar career? And what legacy would you like to leave or how would you like to be remembered? you know, they're basic life things, which is follow your heart, you know, do what, do what pleases you in life. Don't do it for money. Don't yes. do it for <laughs> anybody else, you know, try and follow your dream and try and do it your own way. Um, learn, be inspired by others, um, steal from others, do whatever you've got to do to find your own vision, your own way. Yes. So I think that's it. I think expect that life will take you on a different path than what you plan. It's just the way it works. It, yes, absolutely. <laughs> no matter how much you plan that journey, it will take you on its own. Every little step you take, whether you fall or whether you take a, a strong giant leap, either one of those things will affect your journey and, and make it uniquely your own. The and then what, what legacy would you like to leave? Or how would you like to be remembered? You know, um, when I first started out, I was like, this stuff isn't about me. You know, it's about my subjects. That's what it's yes. about. But now as I look back on the breadth of it and how much it encompasses pop culture history during the time that I've been doing it, um, it is something that I'm proud of and that because of the nature of the people I photographed, it will be left behind. 
Yes. <laughs> but in terms of, you know, my own legacy, um, when my father passed away, someone came up to me um, at his burial and said, you know, your father made me smile. And so if... Um, amazing. I love that. Someone says the same thing about me, that'd be okay. Yeah, amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. So if people would like to reach out or connect with you, what are the best platforms to do so? At Timothy White, my Instagram or my website, uh, timothywhite.com. You can DM me, you can email me there. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us and hopefully we can have you back in the future to see where you are in your journey. So thank, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate it.